Now in the last video, I added in this game over and reset condition. So what happened is you get this text displayed on the screen to let you know that the player has died. But I think it looks a little bit ugly as it is. You've got this white text with a blue, light blue and white cloud background. And also it kind of just freezes everything up. So what I'd like to add in is a transition that slowly fades in these black squares or black rectangles across the screen. Now to have something slowly moving across, I typically use counters. It's a variable that I'm just going to keep increasing until it reaches some kind of limit. So to have this counter, I'll define a new variable within the section here, my game variable section, and I will call it fade underscore counter. So to start off with, the fade counter is going to be zero, but then as soon as the game over condition is met, that's when I'm going to start actually bringing in this fade effect. Now let's go back down to the main game loop and right down to the bottom where the game over condition actually happens. So it, remember, it's this else statement. Up until this point, I'm saying if game over is false, we run the main game code and the logic, but then else, meaning that game over is now true, we go to this text. Now, before I actually display the text, I want to add in my fade counter, or rather my fade effect. Now, I'll build this up slowly just to explain how it actually works. First of all, I want to be able to increase my fade counter variable until the whole screen is filled. So I'll say my fade if fade underscore counter is less than, for now, I'll just pick a, a variable, I'll just say 100. If this variable is less than 100, then continue increasing the fade counter. So fade counter is increased by, let's say, plus equals five pixels. Now, what I'm gonna be doing with this fade counter is drawing rectangles on the screen that are going to be moved by this variable. So the first rectangle will be pygame, whoops, pygame.draw, Dot rect. So this is just how you draw a rectangle onto the screen. The first argument is the screen itself, then the color. Now I don't think I've defined black yet, so let's go up and make sure we do that. So this define color section, I need to add in black. So I'll do that in all caps, and the RGB value of that is the opposite of white, just 0, 0, 0, so there's nothing there. I go back down to where I was a second ago. Uh, it was up here. So pygame.draw.rect screen, the color is going to be black. And then I need to define the four variables of a rectangle within this set of brackets here. So the X and Y coordinates, and then the width and the height. Now I'm going to have two rectangles coming in from opposite sides of the screen, but I'll just do one for now. So the X coordinate of this rectangle is going to come in from the left hand side of the screen. The X coordinate is going to be zero. The Y coordinate is also going to be zero. So it starts off on the top left. Now the width of it is going to be, well, for now, let's just say 10 pixels. And the height of it is going to be the entire screen. So it'll be screen height. Now, if I run this code and fall off the edge of the screen, you'll instantly just see this tiny little sliver of a rectangle here. In fact, I'll make it bigger just so it's, oh yeah, I meant it at 100, not 10. Try that again. Okay, and there we go. So now what I'm getting is a black rectangle starting at 0, 0 that X and Y coordinate in the top left corner. It's got a width of 100 pixels and it goes across the entire screen. But what I want to be doing is having it fade in. I don't want it just instantly to appear at 100 pixels. So this width, rather than being a fixed variable, is going to be a changing variable. So that's where this fade counter comes in. I'll replace this with fade underscore counter. Run this again and I fall off the screen. And there you go, it comes in very quickly, but you saw that this rectangle didn't just appear, it slowly faded in across. So what I wanted to do is actually have it going all the way across the screen. Now at the moment, it's limited to 100 pixels, simply because I've said here, if fade counter is less than 100, then we increase. As soon as it reaches that, it stops, and that's pretty much the end of that effect. Well, let's replace this with screen width. So now, if I run this again, that rectangle should go all the way across. And there we go. And at that point, the fade is complete. So you could actually stop it here. I mean, that's not too bad. As soon as you die, it just fades across like that. But I'd like to have the rectangles coming in from both sides. So that means I need to have two rectangles. Now, the first rectangle is now, it can't really be the entire height of the screen. Otherwise, they're just going to overlap each other. So rather than being screen height on the height, I'm going to divide that by two. Run that again. And now you'll see, I'm just going to get half a screen. Fade. So now I want the same thing, but coming in from this right-hand side across to the left. Now let's create that rectangle. Pygame, 
pygame.draw.rect and it'll be exact same to start with. It's on the screen, color is black. Uh, now this is where it gets different, the x and the y coordinates. With this rectangle, because it's coming in from right to left, I don't want to give it a negative width. So it's not the width I'm going to be changing, that's going to be fixed. It's actually its x coordinate that I'm going to be changing. So it starts off all the way on the right, which means it's all the way on the screen width variable. So from the right hand side of the screen, and then that x variable is going to be decreasing with each iteration of this fade counter. So it's minus fade counter. So this will start at zero, meaning that this will start off all the way on the right. But then as the fade counter increases, this rectangle is going to move further and further to the left. So that's the x coordinate sorted. Now I need the y coordinate. Now remember this initial one, it has a height of screen height over two. So I want this one to start below it. So I can say screen height over two, uh, and that should be actually, that's gonna start the y coordinate just underneath or more or less overlapping the one where the first one ends. Now I need two more variables, the width and the height. So the width doesn't really matter too much, but this is going all the way across the screen. Therefore, it needs to be at least screen width. And now for the height, it's going to be the same as this one because it takes up half of the screen. Let's run this again and see if this works. I fall off here and now I've got two rectangles going against each other. Restart, try again. Uh, oh, of course, I'm not resetting that. So I haven't actually gotten that far yet. I need to add that in a second. But when I die, you can see now I've got these two rectangles coming in. And that's not bad. Again, you can just leave it there. But what I would like to do is take it one step further and rather than having two rectangles, I actually want to break it up into a bunch of rectangles. They're almost like stripes that come across the screen. So to do that, I need to wrap this up in a for loop because rather than having these two, I'm going to have six rectangles, but I don't want to manually type out each one of them. So I'm going to have three from the left, three from the right. Therefore, I can say for y in range from zero to six because that's how many rectangles I will have, but I want it to be in a step of two simply because I'm not repeating this loop six times. I'm, I have two rectangles within each loop, so I'm repeating it three times. So by skipping with a step of two, it's going to essentially do it in steps of two. <laughs> That's not a great explanation there. So now we need to start to slightly tweak this. The rectangles, rather than being uh, starting at zero, zero for the first one, I need to be able to stagger them so that the first one is in the top left corner then the second one is the one that comes in on the right just under it. But then the third one is also going to be in the left, but it's not going to be in the top. So this needs to be moving down the screen by 100 pixels each time. So we can say y, which is this variable here, it will be 0 to start with, then it will jump to 2, then 4, then 6. So I can say y multiplied by 100. So this first rectangle is going to be at 0, y coordinate. Then the next one from the left is going to be at 200 and then 400 and then 600, which is off the bottom of the screen. Uh, but now, of course, the height can't be the full screen height over two. Now I'm splitting the screen into six. So my screen is 600 pixels tall. So I just say 100. I could also do screen height over six, but I guess it's, it's exactly the same effect. So I'll just put a fixed variable here instead. And now I need to do the same thing for this a second rectangle that comes in from the right. So the x coordinate stays exactly the same, but the y coordinate now changes, and it's going to be the same as what I've got here. I can copy this down, put it in here. However, this rectangle needs to be stepped in just below the one above it. So my y variable is y plus one. And then lastly, make sure that the height of it is also just fixed at 100 pixels. Okay, let's run that. Uh, what have I done here? I've forgotten the colon. Run that again. And there we go. Now I've got six rectangles, three of them coming in from the left and three of them coming in from the right. So I think that looks much better. I hope that last section made sense, what I was explaining about the Y variable uh, and what I was doing with the heights. But if you play around with this, it will make sense. And uh, you could always just stick with the previous fade effect I had, which was just the two rectangles. But then the last thing that I need to make sure I capture here, and you will have noticed it when I was testing, when I fall off the screen once, it's all okay. Now I press space to restart, fall off the screen a second time, and nothing happens. It doesn't fade in again. And the reason for that is, remember this fade counter here is increasing by five until it reaches this limit. So actually once that's happened once, 
it's never going to happen again because that frame counter has never been reset back to zero. It's already hit this limit. I need to make sure that when I reset my variables down here, I'm capturing that fade counter also. So we'll say fade counter is also set to zero when the space bar is pressed. Let's try that again, fall off the screen. Okay, reset, and now I'll do it again, and it's kicking in again. So that's it, that's how you add a fairly straightforward uh, fade effect that just adds a little bit of a transition into the game. So I hope you find that useful, and thanks for watching.